a nightmare is coming. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today in our lead story day. For most Americans, a nightmare involves losing their job. I'll show you why millions of Americans will soon be out of work and why the mainstream media is covering up the truth about what's going on in our economy. It's the frightening truth that nobody's talking about. And can one company send the entire U.S. economy spiraling into recession? I'll show you how they can and why their problems are getting worse by the day. And is the government knowingly faking the economic data? I'll show you what one agency has to say about this and why they believe the bad data will make the next recession even worse. And plus, we have a sponsor today's show. We'd like to welcome Avalon Global Care to the show. You can find them on the NASDAQ under symbol ALBT. And they're a commercial stage company that develops and delivers precision diagnostics and lab services. And their stock is in the early stages of a swing trade setup, one where we think it could double or even more. Wait till you see the last times it's had this setup, the stock surged higher. Stay tuned to the end of the show or check out the pinned comment or description for more information. Now, let's hope over to Bloomberg where he picked today's story up with a headline as Boeing CEO's effort to rebuild Playmaker suffered strike setback and this is a huge problem for the U.S. economy because if there's one company that can send the entire U.S. economy spiraling into recession well it's Boeing because they have suppliers not just all over the country but all over the world so when they suffer a setback such as a prolonged strike well it has knock-on effects to the entire U.S. economy and means there's going to be a massive amount of job loss if this strike doesn't end in the very near future and even if it does the damage it's doing to the u.s economy could be everything we need to tip us right over the edge into recession and while the opposition this time was smaller than the overwhelming 94 percent vote to reject the company's initial offer in september the result is a setback to boeing's efforts to get operations back on track the playmaker has been forced to suspend work on a 737 and larger 767 airliner models at a Seattle area manufacturing hub for more than a month, which is weighing on its finances and putting credit rating companies on alert for a possible downgrade to junk status. But as Boeing's factory grinds to a halt, well, it has a massive impact on Americans all over this country as they now face an issue where their jobs could be in jeopardy in a big way. Basically, October is wiped out. Some of November is now wiped out. And it's going to cascade through the entire supply chain. And this is one of the concerns that I've had because the U.S. economy is already slowing down. We've seen the unemployment rate rise. And even though the Fed has said it's hit their ceiling and they've lowered interest rates to stimulate the economy to get consumers to come out and spend, the reality is even if they went out and we saw people buying planes, they can't get delivered. They're not being manufactured. And this means anybody who has a job that relies on Boeing in some fashion at their job, well, it means the risk now is they're not just going to see their hours cut, they could see their job lost altogether. And Ordborg has already instituted a range of cost cuts to weather the fall from the strike, including a 10% reduction in the workforce alongside other measures that include hiring freezes and travel bans. So here we're seeing just at Boeing itself, a 10% reduction in the workforce. And this is huge because the longer those people are out of work, which we could presume will come back to work when, of course, the strike ends, it's damaging for the economy because at first they maintain their spending, but the longer they perceive they're going to be on unemployment, they're spending drops in a big way. And that means, of course, other businesses that rely on all the spending from Boeing's employees, well, they're losing revenue. Eventually, it could mean that they're going to be faced to lay off some, maybe even going out of business. The fallout is also rippling through Boeing suppliers as Spirit Aerosystems Holdings said it will furlough 700 workers and that it might need to resort to layoffs if the strike continues in the next month. And you can imagine, of course, it's Spirit Aerosystems. Well, they have suppliers too, and they're watching this strike, and they realize that if Spirit starts to lay off people, they're going to have no choice but to lay off people as well. And you can see there's going to be impacts in communities all over the country because there's a lot of demand that comes from Boeing building a plane, a lot suppliers to go into each and every plane and without the supply chain running here without planes moving through the factory well it means a lot of americans are going to face a nightmare scenario 
But I want you to see how the media is spinning what's going on in the manufacturing sector with this headline as growth in the U.S. business activity picks up on strength in services. And from the headline alone, you would get the impression that we are indeed seeing the soft landing scenario that Wall Street is now trying to suggest to not only consumers, but to investors all over the world that this is a place and you need to buy stocks because the Fed has done the impossible. But wait until we look at what's going on underneath the report, because I want you to see that the media here is deliberately covering up the truth. As we turn to the S&P Global Flash U.S. Composite PMI, when we look at the manufacturing sector alone, we're now in the fourth month of contraction. It printed at 47.8. Now, anytime you see a print under 50, it means it's in contraction. The smaller the number it is under 50, the deeper the contraction. Now, but the issue we're facing here, it's the fourth consecutive month. So if indeed we were seeing a turnaround in the economy, what we should see is the manufacturing PMI turnaround there should be some good news here, not a continued state of contraction, because again, the risk, the longer Boeing stays on strike, the bigger problems we're gonna have, the knock-on effects across the entire US manufacturing sector are only going to get worse, and again, impact millions of Americans' way of livelihood. Because when we look at the services sector, the improvement was driven by the largest rise in new business in the services sector since April of 2022. Now that is great news. That's what we wanna see in a soft landing, an increase in new business, because what that usually means is employers will say, hey, look, the fax machine's running, we're getting a whole bunch of new orders here, we need to hire people to manage all the new workflow we're coming in. And in turn, fueled by rising domestic demand supports a soft landing narrative, which offset a margin fall and export orders for services but let's take a look at something we see is also going to be surging higher just like the services sector did and that is a stock for our sponsor for today's show Avalon Global you can find them on the Nasdaq on symbol ALBT now a swing trade begins usually when you see a close over the nine-day moving average which happened right here and look what happened it trended higher and then all of a sudden the stock took off making a ton of money for people who bought in early we see a swing trade set up right in here here sent the stock higher we see one right here where it closed over the nine day and then took off and right now we're seeing another close on the nine day against a strong move in price where we think the stock could double or more in value stay tuned to the end of the show we have more information on avalon and more charts to support why their stock is likely to surge higher. But let's take a look at the employment situation now because employment fell for a third straight month in October. So if you're looking for the soft landing narrative here, this doesn't make sense because businesses saw a surge in new orders in the services sector, and yet what they didn't respond with was hiring. And though the decline was only again very modest and less than reported in August and September, the drop in payrolls was more pronounced in the manufacturing sector. And this is a big issue because we know where manufacturing goes, the services sector falls. And it makes sense because manufacturing jobs generally pay more than the average service sector job. So when you see someone in manufacturing go on the unemployment line, their spending is gonna decrease significantly and that's gonna have a knock on effect to all the businesses that they normally spend money at. Though even here, the drop in headcounts was smaller than reported in September. The decline in service jobs was meanwhile only very modest and often linked to the non-replacement of levers rather than layoff. So that's very interesting. So even though we see a surge in demand for services, what we note is that employers are saying, wait a minute, we don't buy into this. We think our existing workforce can handle this. And some of that comes from the fact that we saw a big drawdown in backlogs in the services sector. Now what we note is through attrition, services employers are not hiring and that doesn't bode well for a soft landing at all and we will look at the manufacturing PMI we see the goods producing sector contracted for the fourth consecutive month the largest negative contribution to the PMI again came from new orders which fell for a fourth straight month albeit with the rate of decline easing from September's 15 month peak, followed by stocks, that is inventories of purchases, which fell at the sharpest rate for 14 months to be the only component exerting a more powerful negative drag than PMI than September. Both production and employment fell at reduced rates. So across the board, we see the manufacturing sector continuing to contract. And again, when you don't have demand, when you don't see new orders coming in, when you don't have a lot of backlogs to work through, and you see production fall, what that means for millions of Americans, 
Well, they're about to hit the unemployment line. And here you can see when we look at this chart of capacity utilization shown in blue, it's the unemployment rate shown in red. What do you know? A near mirror relationship between these two because when capacity at a factory declines, that is the percentage of a factory that is being utilized, what happens? The unemployment rate goes up. You can see this relationship consistently across the board and particularly notable going into recessions. If we continue to see capacity demand fall, particularly due to Boeing's mishaps and escalating problems, well, it could mean that millions of Americans will soon be on the employment line and there'll be no stopping us heading into a recession. And more encouragingly, confidence in the longer year ahead outlook has improved as companies hope that a stabler post-election environment is more conducive to growth. Again, what we see here is people do not have an answer for why the economy is slowing down. They were told that we're going to achieve a soft landing. They were told that the feds were the experts here and do exactly what they're doing. We saw the 50 basis point cut. It saw the surge in hirings, at least according to the government. We saw inflation ticked up a bit. We saw, of course, new orders in the retail sector, demand went up there. And yet, despite all of that, there's no answer for the slowdown. Many now are pinning this to the election. The real question we should be asking is, what happens if demand doesn't come back after the elections? This is especially so in the manufacturing sector, where factories hope that the current soft passion production and sales will reverse as the uncertainty caused by a political environment passes. And again, we face one of the biggest risks here is the U.S. economy is slowing down. Boeing's got a strike that they don't seem to have an answer to, and everybody's pinning the future of the U.S. economy on what happens after the elections. But based on the trends we're seeing, nothing's going to get better. In fact, it may only get worse. But let's take a look at the Fed's beige book as it shows little growth across most of the U.S. And this goes against exactly what we're seeing in the data here. Again, we saw non-farm payrolls go up. We saw retail sales go up. We even saw inflation go up a little bit. And all that spurred was huge talk from Wall Street about how we've achieved the soft landing, how the Fed overdid it with a 50 basis point cut. But take a look at this. Multiple districts also noted slowing wage growth. Now, that's what you don't see in a soft landing. In a soft landing, you should see wage growth will start to bottom and turn higher when you see it head down. Well, that doesn't mean the economy is getting better. It means it's getting worse. And reports on consumer spending were mixed with some districts noting shifts in the composition of purchases mostly toward less expensive alternatives. And that's exactly what we talked about in yesterday's show, as Kimberly Clark noted, that people were not buying as much of their Kleenex brand because they were trading down to other inexpensive products. And that is key here. These are not signs that things for finances and American households are getting better. What it suggests is they're getting worse. And as you're about to see, they're going to get even more worse. As we look at the unemployment rate still shown in red, it's average hourly earnings of production and non-supervisory employees. What we can note is here, again, a nice mirror relationship as we head into recessions. The unemployment rate goes up and business owners say, well, wait a minute, I don't have to give you a big raise because if you don't want to work, I can go to the unemployment line and get someone to replace you. They still give out raises. They just shrink in size. And you can see then that happens. It's a foregone conclusion. We're headed into a recession it happens again here going into the dot-com bubble the global financial crisis and right now what do we see a decrease of course in average hourly earnings against a rising unemployment rate and this is dangerous because what it suggests is the headline government data is completely wrong and check this out the report suggests the U.S. economy continues to slow despite upside surprises and official statistics on employment, consumer prices, and retail sales in September. So here you can see that even the media starting to say, wait a minute, there's an issue here. The Fed is saying one thing, that they see the economy slowing, and that maybe we need more rate cuts. In fact, their own beige book, which they actually use to pull, of course, local businesses in the districts, is suggesting the economy is getting worse, despite the fact that the government has put out this headline data that says the the economy is getting better. This doesn't make any sense, but Fed officials have recently cited such antidotes as reasons to continue cutting interest rates despite the upturn in the latest numbers. So here we see the Fed admitting they're well aware that the government data is not accurate. And when you have inaccurate data, my friends, well, it leads to policy mistakes. And that is a dangerous sign for the economy because what it means when we head into recession, the response from the government and its various agencies are going to be based on bad data. And that's only going to break the recession even worse. 
The Beige Book also contained around 15 references to the November elections in the U.S. as a source of uncertainty or a factor that was causing consumers and firms to delay investing, hiring, and purchasing decisions, which again begs the question is, what if none of that actually changes after the election? Well, it would mean we're definitely now headed into a recession, one that we could argue that we're in the early stages now. But when we look at what's going on in the labor market, well, it suggests it doesn't matter whether there's an election or not. Things are indeed getting worse. As U.S. initial jobless claims fall back to pre-hurricane levels. And again here, I want you to see how the mainstream media spins this. Because yes, initial claims did go down, and that's great news. But look at continued claims. They're a proxy for number of people receiving benefits. This increased to nearly 1.9 million in the previous week, the most in almost three years. So why, yes, fewer Americans lost their job last week. Those that were on unemployment stayed there. And those who got on unemployment, well, many of them were unable to find work. And again, we go back to the significance of continued claims, because when people are early on unemployment, they tend to not adjust their spending right away. But when the reality sets in that there isn't work out there, well, what happens? They cut their spending in a huge way. And again, that has knock-on effects to other businesses. And of course, we're relying on the spending from these employees. But what we see when we look at the charts is where continued claims go, initial claims will follow. As we look at this chart where continued claims in blue and initial claims in red, we can see as continued claims rise, you're going to the great financial crisis. Initial claims headed higher. The same thing happened during the dot-com bubble. But look what's happening now. While the government is saying initial claims continue to remain low, continued claims, well, they're headed higher. And we can see the effects of what's going on in the manufacturing sector impacting other employers around the country. Let's take a look at two of them as Harley-Davidson sales drop, prompting cut in 2024 outlook. The Milwaukee-based manufacturer has been focusing on pricier, more profitable touring bike models and offering deals to offset elevated financing costs. But that appealed to fewer buyers in the latest quarters, suggesting that higher prices, even with discounts, aren't working at all. But let's take a look at someone who's tied to the housing sector as Whirlpool gains with higher prices, making up for tepid sales. So again, demand starting to wane here. And Whirlpool has been working to revive its business in an environment where squeezed consumers have been loaded to buy expensive appliances. The company is trying to cut manufacturing and product costs to boost profitability despite lower sales. Earlier this year, it cut a thousand salary positions globally and Peters said the company's still planning to reduce expenses, and as they reduce expenses, well, that means other businesses that rely on business from Whirlpool are gonna see their revenue drop, you're gonna see more hours get cut, more jobs that get lost, and you can see how this is spiraling out of control. It has everything to do with the fact we have inaccurate government data, and now we have the media covering up the truth of what's going on in the economy, and all this is going to do is lead to millions of Americans out of work and a complete nightmare scenario. But if you're looking for an opportunity to make money, we'll look no further than the stock for our sponsor today's show, Avalon Global Care. You can find them on the NASDAQ under symbol ALBT, and their stock is in the early stages of a swing trade setup, one we think could double or more in value. We'll show you the charts. Let's take a look. Everything in the pinned comment and description below. And Avalon is advancing laboratory services and precision diagnostics. They're a commercial stage company dedicated to developing and delivering innovative, transformative precision diagnostics and clinical laboratory services. Their core technology platforms are precision diagnostics and clinical laboratory services. They have KetoAir, a breathalyzer device with nanosensor technology, and QTY protein design platform with joint intellectual property with Massachusetts of Institute of Technology. Let's take a look at some of their financial highlights. Back from 2022, they had revenue of 14.7 million, gross profit of 8.1 million, and total operating expense of 2.4 million with a net income of 6.3 million. They have volatile organic compound-based nanosensors technology that's going to take the market in a big way. They have a single VOC called Keto Air. It detects and quantifies acetone levels in breath for home use. It monitors ketosis state for optimization of ketogenic diets. It's bundled with an AI nutritionist app, and Avalon is the exclusive distributor in North America, South America, the EU, and the UK. They also have multiple VOCs, 
breath print, P-O-C-T, and it's a prototype for early detection of lung cancer. Let's take a look at some of the recent press releases as Avalon Global Care launches online sales of Keto Air breathalyzer in the US at ketoair.us. And Keto Air is a breathalyzer featuring hot app shareable technology with AI enabled software specifically engineered for ketogenic health management. By leveraging the nano sensor based technology and AI algorithms, the Keto Air breathalyzer are designed not only to assess the ketosis stats of an individual user, but also seamlessly record diet and exercise details directly into the Keto Air app, accessible both on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. The FDA registered Keto Air breathalyzer empowers users to take control of their health and wellness journey. Utilizing advanced breath testing nanotechnology aligned with the app's AI nutritionist, it offers personalized nutritional and exercise recommendations tailored to individual health goals. We're excited to launch online sales for Keto Air Breathalyzer in the U.S. This is from the President and Chief Executive Officer of Avalon Global Care. We believe the novel AI nutritious feature sets a new standard in the market, providing users with a holistic solution to monitor and optimize their ketosis state and body fat burning rate. The blow to no technology is designed to provide precise and immediate results with just a single exhale, allowing users to track how different foods and activities affect their ketone levels. And Avalon Global Care to sponsor Keto Palooza 2024 conference and showcase Keto Air Breathalyzer device. Avalon will use the event to showcase the Keto Air Breathalyzer device, a handheld device designed to monitor ketosis via breath analysis. Conference attendees will have the opportunity to see live demonstrations of the device and purchase it, along with related accessories, directly on site. And we're excited to partner with Keto Palooza 2024 conference and introduce Keto Air Device to a passionate and health conscious community. The conference gathers keto enthusiasts from across the country to share tips, insights, and resources for maintaining a ketogenic lifestyle. Avalon's Keto Air Breathalyzer offers a user-friendly way to track ketosis in real time without invasive blood tests. And Avalon Global Care signed an agreement with QI Diagnostics to exclusively distribute Keto Air Breathalyzer device and AI-enabled software in North America, South America, UK, and the European Union. And Avalon and QI Diagnostics also intend to collaborate to co-develop a breathalyzer device for potential screening and early detection of lung cancer and will have joint ownership of any and all intellectual property arising from or generated in the co-development of a lung cancer breathalyzer product. And now let's take a look at the chart setup because we think the opportunity for Avalon Global Care stock, again, you can find it on the NASDAQ under symbol ALBT, has the potential to double or more. Let's go back to that initial chart we looked at with the swing trade. We can see right Right here we get it closed over the nine day moving average the stock trends higher and then all of a sudden just surges up and that was a huge return we take a look at here's another swing setup we get it closed over the nine day moving average and it jumps again and now we see another setup right here we get a strong move over the nine day this is happening today looking to close this is setting up a potential huge move for ALBT and let's take a look at some of the catalysts behind this as we look at the 10 day volume profile we can see today it's like to close over the 10 day suggesting buyers here over the past 10 days are looking to accumulate avalon global care stock and send it surging higher and when we look at our price targets we see the initial move is right around 46 cents a share that's double where it was trading right at the time of filming with the potential breakout up to 86 cents a share this is one opportunity you don't want to miss out and again you can find avalon global care on the nasdaq under symbol albt but as always with any company we feature on our show you know no obligation to purchase their stock be sure to do your own research before placing any trades and with that i'm steve van meter thanks for watching Thanks for being fans. Bye now.